HBCU man. HBCU man. It's hard for a nigga like me, man. I ain't past eighth grade. <laughs> You already know what it is, your boy Mane on her small stack paper, you see me. This niggas is Chris Brown and bitches in here. No, Come on, stop on. Me, man. Come on. <laughs> shit was going all right, man, today, man. Come on, HB, what is it? HBCU, HBCU mix. mix. You really work on its own, you know, it's like a gift. You just gotta have it. So, you know, you just be able to attend, like, um, I know Trey, he has this thing called ASCAP uh, writing sessions. And it's a, you know, it's a place where uh, producers and writers go, go to. And you just be able to network. You know, every time there's a music conference that's here, you know, just be able to go to it and just network and get people's numbers and, you know, be able to put it together and then have the proper people know who to present it to. You know, so that's basically it. You just gotta have that, that ear for that next time. Okay, you, you, and I'll say this now and I'll move on from you. You are actually gonna be dealing with A&Rs in, 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 a, in a capacity of consulting them what does that really mean? What were you? Um, like I, I do that on an everyday basis now. But would you tell, to, yeah, tell us too what that is, so they can understand right. what that is and what does it take to be that kind of guy right. from an educational perspective, from a, whatever. I mean, just give us the mic. Yeah, right, basically, what I do on an everyday basis, like I run Jermaine Priest Publishing Company, right? Um, it's, it's the songwriters and producers signed to it. So my job is to put the producers with the songwriters to create records. And once they give me the records, then I call up the A and R's to you know get get those records placed on different artists' um, uh, albums and stuff like that. So in me doing that and me um, dealing with these A and R's every day, uh, I built the relationship with Atlantic Records, and they love all you know. They just like man, good at what you do. So basically, you know, they offered me a job in um, Los Angeles to basically you know be an A and R with them. So that's basically you know what I do, but and being able to match the right producers and the songwriters and um, coming up with some good songs and then sending it off rather than me just sending off just anything. I, you know, I always make sure it was good quality stuff and that's basically you know how everything came about. Ken, you're, you're, you're in this arena and in a whole different ball game. Um, what was your biggest obstacle to finally break through? When did you know you finally had connected? Well, um, Getting people to accept, um, for one, getting go the gospel music to accept you as somebody that's doing something that sounds hip hop and R&B, and then getting the, the you know everybody else to just respect the craft and what you're bringing. You know what I'm saying? So I tell people all the time, just because it's gospel, that don't mean that it's hot. Just because you're singing about God, don't mean that everybody want to listen. You know, you got to make great music. It still comes down to what my brother said earlier. You in the studio. Uh, perfect your craft, perfect your sound. So um, what we did was uh, uh, got on a lot of panels, got on a lot of showcases, gospel and mainstream. Uh, make sure you're out there. Make sure you 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 attend the things that you need to be uh, attended to be educated, um, and and then make sure that you're asking the proper questions. Because from a hustle standpoint, um, at the end of the day, uh, we're able to you know on a, on a, on a street level do a little video or whatever to our consumers, which is the gospel uh, community, you know, and get a certain amount of downloads and you're able to capitalize off the playing field of the internet, which means instant. We can go in the studio right now, create something, put it up on the internet. We have a database of a couple of uh, hundreds of thousands of people, so and we, we, we make sure we communicate with those people. And I have to do it because sometimes you can't go to the gatekeepers of the gospel music industry who don't understand, man, there are some people that really dig us talking about God with this type of feel, with this type of swag. So I have to make sure that we do it ourselves. We take it to the people. If I have to, you know, sometimes you have to email the records out and you got to push it and you got to believe in yourself. Everybody, nobody's going to believe in you whether you're doing mainstream gospel or Christian music or whatever more than you, you know. So when you put it out, when you push it, you stay on it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I call my hustle, my hustle is just as hard as everybody else. So, you know, when it comes down to it, is you pushing it, you staying on it, you know, you're going to the internet, you're checking out what people are saying about you, you're being where you're supposed to be. When you hit the stage or when you do what you're supposed to do, when your music plays, you make sure it's as hot as everybody else. So when it gets to Jesus, people put up with Jesus if your junk is hot, you know what I'm saying? So my thing is to make it as hot as possible so when you play it, no matter what you're talking about, hot is hot.
1992, the first text message was sent. December 1992. Thanks for that, Maestro. Um, today, more texts are sent and received than there are people on the planet. In 1992, the first one was done. So technology is so rapidly moving that that's why I said 10 years ago, some of the things that are, that are, that are jobs today, like, like Tremaine just mentioned how um, we're getting money from, was it MySpace, did you say? No, AOL. AOL. So, so there are some new things going on. Can I get my panel, my panel members to at least comment on what does our audience need to focus on in terms of the future of this industry from a technology perspective? I'm gonna start with you, Trey, uh, and then I want you guys to get questions because we want to turn the floor over to students so you guys can ask your questions. But I'd like a couple of you guys to respond from different perspectives. What does the students, what do, what do our students need to be focused on from a technology perspective to be in the game five years from now? Um, the biggest thing right now, because people are not really, they're not selling albums per se, and they want a lot of albums. So the, the mechanical royalty is not being paid because they're not recouping these albums that they spend all this money on. So we gotta look at other mediums. We gotta start looking at things like um, sync licenses, commercials, TV shows, movies. Um, and then we start looking at what we do from an ASCAP perspective. Um, there's, there's so many other different ways, ringtones, ringbacks. You know, we, we pay on previews from the ringtone companies uh, for those ringtones and things of that nature. So there's so many different avenues because everybody is using music nowadays. And you gotta remember that since, this, since everything now is so um, internet driven, there's so many different advertisers that need music. And, and here's, a, here's a secret to you guys who are getting these publishing deals, is that a lot of these independent filmmakers and things like that, TV shows, they don't not necessarily like to use the, publish, the, the, the producers who are assigned to publishing companies, because it's that much harder to clear that record for their advertising. Because everybody knows who does music is that they put the commercial together and then they come to the music labs. And so when they come to get that music, they're like, they're on a timetable, so they need that stuff to be clear right away. So they're looking at you, 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 you independent producers and independent writers who have these records who are not tied up. So there's so many different opportunities right now to make music and to make money off of music. It, it, it's just not fun. Trey, I'm sorry I had that just because I don't mean to do this, but you just hit a big money note about the film and music for TV and, and different film projects. How would these kids know how to, how to find out, how to connect with that? I mean, how would they even know how to get to that world? Any suggestions? I, I was walking up with a young producer who's sitting out there now, and he was talking about how, you know, he started to like this television music world more than the placement of the records. It's because, you know, you know, even though it's a lag of 60 to 90 days of getting a check, but, I mean, he's getting ten or fifteen thousand dollars a while because he went through a, a, a um, an advertising agency to get the to get the music out there, and he was talking about it's a multicultural uh, advertising agency. So they they tailor make some more of the Walmart ad commercials that you see that tailor make for our community, the McDonald's ads that tailor make for our community, the the Clorox's, and you know, I mean, we live a different lifestyle than you know our, our fellow Caucasian brothers. You know what I'm saying? And they have to market to us in a different way because we're a more educated consumer. So if we're a more educated consumer, then you have to put an advertising agency out there that understands what we do. And if they understand what we do, they have to understand our culture. And right now, our culture is being formed by the music that people are actually playing and that they're actually listening to. And that's how they're touching so many different kids. So, you know, that was one that, they, that you know, that he was talking about through advertising agencies that actually tailor make to our community. And so there's so many different opportunities out there. I mean, you know, you can go online and look at independent filmmakers who are looking for ads for, for music because they just don't know where to go. I mean, their whole thing is they have a budget to set up inside of that budget for music. And so they don't really want to deal with it. So they just want to be able to go find the music and, and have the music brought into it. But they don't even have the time between editing and, and filming and all that other stuff to understand that the music is such an essential part of it. So they'd rather for you guys to film the music. So there's so many different ways to get in. This internet is a powerful, powerful tool. And if you don't know how to maneuver through the internet right now, then you might as well get out of the music business because it's not going to work with 